going on. So we'll uh, try to get you taken care of quick so uh, you can get back to your preparation and we'll see you in New Orleans in a few days. Uh, I'd like to start off, if you're good with just making a brief opening statement, then we'll go to questions. You want me to make an opening statement? Yeah, if, if you're good with that, or we can go okay. right to questions if you prefer. Uh, hey, I'm, not, I'm not much of an opening statement. Guy. <laughs> I, like give, I like to give the guys the, uh, the opportunity to ask questions. Absolutely. We'll start off with Ross Dellinger from Sports Illustrated. Hey, Tony. Uh, can you tell us uh, what you did exactly for Michelin, uh, maybe where you were based, what your job duties were, and how and why you returned to coaching? So, so when I started, I was, I was hired on as an industrial engineer. That's what I graduated from Clemson with a degree in industrial engineering. And uh, part of my job was just trying to figure out how to optimize, you know, some of the systems and the processes that they had in place. Uh, in particular, uh, I was working with a production unit. The plant that I was at was, was actually manufacturing all the rubber that you ship off to the tire plants where they actually build the tires. And so we were just trying to optimize the weight per pallet uh, of the, uh, of the uh, fabricated rubber so that we can maximize uh, the weight on a, on a, on a shipping truck so that we can cut down the costs. And so that's where I started. And then from there, that was my first, uh, when you go to work for Michelin as an industrial engineer, uh, they put you in a program. So I had a six month study. That was my project there. Once I finished that, then I just integrated into uh, working with a couple of business units uh, within the plant and just trying to help them figure out how to optimize everything from the, uh, the, the raw materials, uh, the, uh, the machinery, and then also the, uh, the human input. Next, we'll go to Matt Connolly from the state. Hey Tony, I, I was just wondering with, with Tyson and the situation his family went through, um, how did how did you all try to help him and what what's it been like for you guys on offense trying to help him? You know, it's a, it's a really tough situation. Uh, and I remember, and just thinking back, I know Grady went through a similar situation, but as it relates to Tyson, uh, biggest thing is, is we were able to get a waiver to, to be able to, you know, contribute to the, uh, to the GoFundMe page for him and his family. Uh, you just think about all the immediate needs uh, that you would have in a situation when your house burns down, uh, things that we take for granted. So the biggest thing is just, you know, trying to support him emotionally as he goes through that difficult time. And then those who are able to, uh, to contribute, just trying to help them reach their goal uh, on their GoFundMe page. Next will be Nathan Baird from Cleveland.com. Hey, Tony. Some of the uh, names and faces on Ohio State's defense are, are the same from last year, but they've moved around a little bit. Um, one in particular, Pete Werner, who was their Sam linebacker this year, moving over to Will. Uh, what Anything that jumps out at you on, on film about him and in that new role and, and what he means to this defense? You know, Pete was a guy that, that going into the game, um, you, you don't realize just, just how good of an athlete he is. Uh, watching him on tape is when you play him uh, in person that you see that he's a, he's a guy that's got a big body, but he can move. He can move well, move like a safety. He can cover. Uh, and then what you see now with him playing inside the box, he just got, has natural instincts. He can find the ball. Uh, and then obviously with his with his movement skills, he moves he moves quickly so he can get around blocks. Uh, then he's also big enough to uh, to be able to, to set the edge too uh, if he's ever in that situation. So you know just he's a guy that that from last year uh, that after the game okay, you had a lot of respect for him uh, and then some of the other faces too. And, and it's been tough too. I understand that they've been uh, been battling issues with COVID and so he's been asked to play a lot of different positions just as Browning's been asked to play a lot of different positions. Um, so, so all those guys, you know, you can tell that they're, they're, uh, they're doing what it takes uh, to be successful. And, and the structure looks very, very similar. As you said, some of the names and, and faces are new, uh, but, the, but the product looked very, very similar. We'll now go to David Hood from TigerNet.com. Hey, Coach. Yeah, it, it kind of piggybacking off of that. Obviously, the personnel has changed. They were so good in the middle of last year, so good on the edge. Do you see a lot of similarities there? you know, with how they try to attack and, and the success that they've been having? They, actually, David, they, they were very good in the middle, on the edges, and on the back end last year. And they're very, very similar. Uh, again, a lot of the, a lot of the faces and, and names may be new, but the structure, uh, the, uh, the tenacity that they play with, uh, they're very, very well coordinated. Uh, everybody understands what their role is, how they fit. Uh, they're not out of position much. They fit their gaps. Uh, if, you are, if you are lucky to be able to make them step up in pass protection, they know exactly where you need to go. Once they, once they diagnose, they know their drop, uh, their drop spots, uh, their reading routes. Uh, so, so a lot of the stuff is, is very similar to last year uh, with the difference. The only difference is just the names and the faces. But, you know, what you can tell, uh, they understand uh, structurally, offensively, what, they're trying to, what you're trying to do. Uh, they have their guys very, very well prepared. You can tell that number 32, tough in the middle, very, very smart linebacker, helps those guys get lined up. Um, they've had to, to play some different guys inside uh, and on the defensive line uh, throughout the course of the year. But, you know, you can't really tell the difference between those guys, 11 and, uh, and zero. I mean, they pretty much are splitting images of each other. And then you got the length in number nine, 
uh, on, on the edge. Uh, they know how to play the zone read. Uh, so, so again, I know the coordinator may be different, uh, but the product is very, very similar. We'll now go to David Hale from ESPN. Hey, Tony, uh, as a, a Clemson lifer and a guy who knows the program and knows the history, uh, I, I don't want to read too much into sort of what fans think about things, but for a long time, as this uh, level of success continued to grow, you guys were the good guys fighting against the Alabama evil empire in a lot of fans' minds outside of Clemson fans. Uh, it feels like maybe this year more than ever, you guys have sort of been in that, that cachet of the bad guys too because of all the success you've had. Is that something that anybody takes notice of inside the program? I know Dabo has always liked playing the little old Clemson underdog card uh, as a way of motivating things. Does, does being the bad guy sort of be its own motivation a little bit? You know, I don't think that, that we, we look at it from that perspective. Uh, Coach always says that right is right, wrong is wrong. And so, so when Coach, uh, Coach Sweeney believes, um, believes in something, man, he's going, he's going to say what he believes and he's going to act accordingly uh, with what he believes. And, uh, and obviously, I know there's been, you know, a lot of uh, back and forth with, with, some, with some comments from last year and then some of the things with, with Coach's ranking. But, you know, he believed that was the right thing to do. Uh, and it wasn't anything in disrespect to Ohio State, but it was just based off of the totality of the season and the sacrifices that a lot of teams had to make. Uh, but for us, you know, several years back, we also uh, adopted the mantra, embrace the target. You know, we were no longer going to be little old Clemson that could stick up on people that whenever we stepped on the field, we were going to get uh, everybody's best. And so for us, it's just about embracing the target, uh, staying staying true to our fundamentals uh, uh, on the field, but also our fundamentals and core values off the field. Uh, and then understand that the, with success comes scrutiny, uh, but always resetting every single year back to what the foundation of the program is and then building off of that uh, as, the, as each team uh, creates their own identity throughout the season. We're now going to go to Tony Gerdeman from Buckeye Scoop. Tony, I'm wondering if you feel like you know more about the Ohio State defense based on the game last year or based on the film you've seen this year? Yeah, as I said earlier, uh, with, with, in response to some of the questions, the, the structure is very, very similar. Uh, obviously, I know there's two different coordinators between the last time we played them and, and this season, uh, but they still have the similar structure. Uh, they play the same coverages, very similar pressures. I anticipate uh, they're going to have some things that, that we got to adjust to uh, throughout the course of the game. Uh, but it's a combination of getting ready for this one, making sure that we understood from last year's uh, tape where we needed to improve because obviously uh, it's professional courtesy. They're going to try and attack some of the things that they had some success attacking last year and we got to make sure that we've uh, fixed those and then they're going to build upon the strengths of, uh, of this team. Even though the structure is, is similar, each team, just as like us on offense, each unit is going to have their own identity and so they're going to play to the strengths of their identity. Uh, they're going to test and make sure that we corrected the issues from last year, uh, but I think it's just going to come down to at the end of the day, uh, you get to this point doing what you do. Uh, you're not going to get away from, from what your, your base off offense is. You're going to have a couple of game plan wrinkles. Uh, but at the end of the day, in this one, uh, on the biggest stage, when the lights are bright, uh, there's going to be a lot of emotion uh, uh, in this game. you got to make sure that you put your players in a position to be successful. And the best way to do that is to just do what you do uh, and do what has gotten you to the point uh, to be in this game. Next up will be Paul Meyerberg from USA Today. Hey, Tony. Um, if Deshaun's remembered as the guy who helped orchestrate the program's next step from 2014 through 16, um, what do you believe Trevor Lawrence's legacy or, or long-standing impact will be when his time ends at Clemson? Oh man, that's a that's a tough question because um, because you know Deshaun was was great and he took us to took us to the promised land. You know, it's like, it's not a situation where Deshaun didn't win a win a national championship and then you know Trevor's won one and you know having an opportunity to play in it playing another. But I think the biggest thing for Trevor, uh, I think his legacy is going to be his record uh, uh, being the all time winning quarterback in school history. Uh, but more importantly, I think it's going to be the impact that he made on the game of college football with some of the stances that he took uh, in particular this season. Uh, but most importantly, he's just, he's just, just like Deshaun Man, they're, they're humble young men. Uh, they, they love to win. They love to compete. They love to do it the right way. Uh, and they're about service too to their teammates and their community. So I think the legacies will be similar. Uh, and as time goes by, uh, you know how it is. The, the legends is always going to grow. So, so I'm, I'm actually looking forward to seeing what that, uh, what that legacy is down the road. We will now go to Anna Hickey from Clemson 24-7. Hey, Tony. Uh, Dabo mentioned yesterday that the wide receivers didn't exactly play their best game versus Ohio State last year. I know it's largely a different group this year, but is that something that you can point to um, just kind of to challenge them going into this game? 
No doubt. And, and, and really, the wide receivers, uh, the interior of the offensive line, you know, Travis and pass protection. Uh, we put a couple of balls in jeopardy uh, in the passing game. Um, and fortunately, we were able to make enough plays in the end to, to win the game. So everybody's going to be challenged to, to play better because we know that, uh, that they're going to come in and, and they want it just as bad as we do. And we're going to have to execute. But the wide receivers were challenged last year. And I made reference to that uh, in a previous question that they're probably going to try and attack us the same way, I would imagine. Uh, get up there and press our guys and see can they have more success uh, who's going to have more success their corners are or our receivers in terms of, of winning the matchup at the line of scrimmage and so biggest thing for us is is making sure that that we don't try and do too much but we're well aware of the things we need to improve upon and then have the right state of mind uh because last year i think going into it they came out they punched us in the mouth you know it's been a while since we've been in a heavyweight fight uh in reference to last season uh, and it took us a little, they bladed our nose. It took us a little while to, to rebound and then, and then really kick it in gear. But in this game right here, we're not going to be fortunate enough to be able to, to have that mindset. We got to come in uh, and we got to set the tempo early with what we're doing on offense. We got to match their physicality and their intensity in the trenches. And then guys got to go make competitive plays. We have time for one more question. We'll go to Dennis Dodd from CBS Sports. Uh, hey, Tony. Um, you know, there's a reason the, the wishbone isn't run anymore. The beer isn't run anymore. Will there be a day that defenses sort of quote unquote catch up to the spread in, in RPOs because you know guys like Brett Venables are, are game planning against it every day? Right. You know, I, I'd, I'd say in, in reference to this question here is, is it may not be the wishbone, but there's a lot of option principles yeah. still uh, floating around, uh, you know, at the college level. And it's even trickling back up to the uh, to the NFL level. So I think that, you know, as it's always a cat and mouse and, and just as they're going to try and find ways to uh, to, to stop the uh, the new trends, we're always going to be looking for new trends and then we'll recycle things. You know, I, th I even think the Chiefs, you know, put a bone formation out there uh, a couple yeah. of uh, uh, a couple of times this season. So I think that it's just, it's, it's a revolving, you know, revolving cycle, you know, things come and go uh, and it's cat and mouse and everybody's trying to, to stay one step ahead. But just as tempo, you know, tempo was a new thing. Uh, defense has figured out how to be able to, to call their, to call their game, even with the element of tempo. And so then you have to, you know, transition there. So I think it's just constantly going to be cat, uh, cat and mouse going forward. And, and offensively, you know, we're trying to stay ahead of the curve, just like defensively, they want to try and see if they can get, uh, get the advantage as well. And so at the end of the day, Football is always going to be about angles and numbers uh, when you boil it down and winning one-on-one -on -one matchups. And so schemes are great, but when you get to this point in the season, uh, schemes, you're going to have to have them. But at the end of the day, it's going to be the Jimmys and the Joes uh, that are going to make things go. Yep. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time.